When you think about growing your wealth, you're bound to think of many different pathways, techniques, and mechanisms to get you there. In this video, we're going to talk about the tool sets you need to grow your wealth starting from nothing and getting all the way up to millionaire status and beyond. We'll talk about the boring stuff and of course the secrets that the rich don't want to talk about, but that make them millions of dollars every year and billions over their lifetimes. So, so if you're within the sound of my voice, gently, tenderly, lovingly caress that like button for the YouTube algorithm because this video is going to drive massive value to you. What's up you guys? You're watching Finance Squared. I'm your host, Derek West, and we're talking about the tools for investing and how to apply them to your financial life. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell for more great videos just like this in the near future. But with all that out of the way, let's dive right in. So for anyone starting at zero, it might seem like an impossible goal to have a $10,000 or $100,000 portfolio or even a seven figure portfolio. The question on everybody's mind is how do you go from being in debt, a place that I myself started with $60,000 in student loan debt to having multiple six figures invested and growing at a steady rate. Well, like any edifice, you need to obtain, sharpen, and harness the tools for investing. Let me give you a brief example in case I'm not being entirely clear. If you're going to build a house, you're going to need the raw materials, the bare land, the cement, the brick, the mortar, the marble for the countertops, the hardwood for the cabinets, and other features. But you also need the tools that make putting all those things together easier. You need picks. You need shovels. To get the land prepared for building, you need a cement mixer for mixing the frickin' cement. Alternatively, you can mix it by hand. With mortar, you're gonna need trowels, also the tools for mixing and putting it on bricks and so forth. You're gonna need diamond tipped blades and your radial saw. If you're gonna be cutting that marble countertop to the right proportions, you'll need hammers and nails to put together those cabinets and the framing of the house. I could go on and on and on. Well, it is exactly the same thing with investing. Obviously, with investing, you need the raw materials for anything to work. Namely, you need money. If you have zero dollars and zero cents, I'm afraid you can't invest in anything at all. Now, I apologize for that. Uh, not really. That's not my fault. But it is unfortunate nevertheless. But once you have the raw materials, you need the tools to put those raw materials to work. And that's what I'm talking about in this video. Now, let me be clear. You don't need a ton of raw materials. In other words, money. I'm talking about money here. To get started in investing. In fact, in fact, the beautiful thing about our society today is that anyone with almost any amount of money can begin investing as long as they have the right tools. So no, don't think you already have to have a lot of cash saved up to begin investing. In fact, that kind of thinking can lead to you to never start investing, which will always lead to you having a smaller nest egg or no nest egg at all. But now that we know what I mean when I talk about investing tools, let's break up the tools into a couple of different categories and then subdivide those categories into two separate pursuits, if you will. I'm talking about soft tools and hard tools. The soft tools are the boring yet necessary tools that you'll need if you're ever going to invest successfully. What do I mean by all of this? Well, soft tools include having an emergency fund. Now, didn't I just say that money is the raw material of investing? Correct. I did just say that. So why am I coming back and talking about an emergency fund as a tool for investing? Well, your emergency fund would be a fund that you have money stashed away into to pay for emergency situations and really sustain your lifestyle should anything happen to your multiple sources of income. It also acts as a buffer to know that whatever you're invested in the stock market, you will always have a little bit of cash stashed away for the unthinkable economic apocalypse that could befall all of us. So that means that the money you have invested, you have set aside specifically for that and you are not investing with, with next month's mortgage payments, hoping that the market doesn't go south. Do not underestimate the peace of mind that you have and also the confidence you will have to not pull out of the market when things go south, much like they did earlier in 2020, when you have a little bit of money set aside, not invested in the stock market or in real estate or in cryptocurrencies or actual currencies or anything else. This makes an emergency fund an important tool to growing your wealth. And we can't forget about an actual investment account. Obviously, as far as soft tools are concerned, we all are aware of rudimentary accounts that store the money that we're not spending on our lavish lifestyles, i.e. our checking or savings accounts. Typically, these accounts have pretty low yields and we like them that way because we're using that money in the short term and we want to have immediate access to it. <laughs> That's what those accounts are for. Of course, there are both high yield savings and checking accounts. Both are great topics for separate videos, actually. But generally speaking, if you want to avoid all the headaches of checking accounts or saving account churning, then just a plain old checking or saving account is the way to go. But when it comes to tools to help you increase your wealth, having an investment account is an absolute must. When I say investment account, I'm talking about a money market account. What a lot of people are unaware of is that there are different types of accounts out there, including standard brokerage accounts, 
also known as a taxable brokerage account or a non-retirement account. These types of accounts are not associated with any sort of tax benefits and are really just a place to park your money so that you can easily place them into an appropriate vehicle for your investments. Each of those vehicles could be considered an investment tool and we'll get to those coming up, so stay tuned. But your standard brokerage account can either be a cash account or a margin account, defying the people who say that banks will give you money in real estate, but not in the stock market. That's right, I'm talking about Grant Cardone. You absolutely can get money to invest in the stock market from banks. Now, whether or not that is a good idea is a completely separate video. Like and subscribe. But one of the ways that you can borrow money to invest in the stock market is through margin brokerage accounts. Like I said, they may not be the smartest idea if you're about safely and slowly growing your nest egg, but they are a tool in your investing tool belt. Now, there is no yearly or other limit to putting money into your brokerage account, and you can withdraw money at any time, keeping in mind that you may owe taxes if your investments grow in that time period. Now that's called capital gains, folks. But next up, we have retirement accounts. A retirement account, such as an IRA, or individual retirement account is a standard brokerage account with access to the same range of events. But the biggest difference between a retirement account, namely an IRA, and a standard brokerage account is how Uncle Sam taxes or doesn't tax that account. We talked about standard IRAs, the tool set of choice for such YouTubers as Graham Stephan, but there are also Roth IRAs. But there are even investment accounts for small business owners and self-employed individuals. Tools like SEP IRAs, simple IRAs, and solo 401ks. Depending on the type of IRA you set up, you can either get a tax break in the year you make contributions, and trust me, you're gonna need it, or when you withdraw from the IRA. Both tactics have their pluses and minuses, but consider the IRA as another tool in your tool belt. There are other types of accounts that you can't open to invest your cash, and depending on your needs, these accounts may be useful to you. If you have kids and you wanna save for their education, elementary, secondary, collegiate, you can set up a 529 account for just such a purpose. You can also set up custodial accounts just so that your kids or any beneficiary really can learn how to invest while they wait until they are officially 18 to take over the reins and do their thing. So now you know the basic soft tools that you'll need to be a good investor. What do you do once you have the nice little emergency fund stowed away and an investment account of some sort set up? Well, that is where the hard tools for investment come in. Each of these tools can be an entire video in and of themselves. Like and subscribe. But for the sake of keeping this video short, I'm just giving you a taste of what the tools are that you can use to increase your wealth. Real estate. So let's start off with real estate. There is no doubt about it. The way to safely and securely and consistently grow your wealth over time without being too risky in the stock market is to use real estate. It doesn't have to be overly complex either. Start by purchasing a house in a neighborhood that is desirable, not too rich or not too poor, fixing it up while you live in it. Then once you've done that, rent that out to someone else who will live in it while you do the same thing somewhere else. Do that once every two years and you will be a millionaire in net worth anyway in less than 12 years. Now, you will need to have a down payment and no, do not touch your emergency fund. And there is real work that needs to be done for all this to come to fruition. I just mentioned that you'll need to fix it up in order for the price of that property to go up. And you're typically gonna to wanna to avoid the speculative aspects of real estate markets. For example, flipping houses or building new real estate. In both examples, you don't know when and where those markets will collapse. And if and when they do collapse, while you're building slash flipping, you'll lose your shirt. But you should keep it nice and easy and stick with proven strategies for building wealth. Buy, hold, rent. <laughs> of course, there are other more exotic real estate strategies out there. For example, Airbnb properties, which you can do by simply renting out those properties using the app Airbnb which you can do by simply short-term renting out properties that you purchase or even rent yourself. Now, admittedly, that can also be speculative, particularly during this time of nationwide lockdowns and restriction on travel, but it can be a tool in your tool belt if you have a property that you're looking to fill. Other hard tools that we need to discuss, mutual funds, index funds, ETFs. These are the bread and butter of the investing world. Each of those investing tools offers you, the investor, a safe and easy way to invest your money and to have a diversified portfolio. Do you want to invest in green energy? There's an ETF, index fund, or mutual fund for that. Do you want to invest in an entire index like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ or the Dow Jones Industrial Average? There's an ETF, index fund, or mutual fund for that. Do you want to invest in foreign stocks associated with China? There's an ETF, index fund, or mutual fund for that. Want to invest strictly in bonds as you're nearing your retirement? I'm starting to sound like a broken record here. There's an ETF, index fund or mutual fund for that. Each of those types of funds differs in key ways. I'll speak to that in a different video, but you can think of them as baskets of stocks, bonds, etc. 
that are designed to track and hold specific stocks and provide the investor with a diversified set of stocks to save him or herself the hassle and expense of buying each of these stocks individually which can actually be in the hundreds. Now there are of course strategies to owning any and all of these types of investing tools, but that too is much better suited for a different video. And next up we have stocks, the granddaddy of all investment tools. Owning and investing in stocks is the go-to way to increase wealth for most Americans, particularly if you have a 401k. And in fact, stocks are the building blocks of index funds, mutual funds and ETFs, and even more exotic, investment instruments. Stocks have the advantage of being more profitable than the index funds, mutual funds, e or ETFs, but also have the disadvantage of being more volatile. But as they say, no risk, no reward. And stocks are definitely riskier than any of the index fund types since they represent a piece of just a single company and, their, and that company's fortunes and or misfortunes. So if a company is going bankrupt or about to go bankrupt, then it's definitely not going to look good on your balance sheet. But if the stock goes well and continues to rise and grow and get more profits, then your fortunes will rise with it, as will your wealth. We talked about real estate a second ago. What if you don't have enough money for a down payment for, let's say, a house of your own or for a rental property? Do you still not trust the stock market? If both of those things are the case, maybe a REIT is the right type of investment vehicle for you. What exactly is a REIT? When I say REIT, what am I talking about? So R-E-I-T, a real estate investment trust. REITs, in many cases, operate many types of commercial real estate, ranging from office and apartment buildings to warehouses, hospitals, shopping centers. Um, avoid those REITs like the plague, by the way. There are even REITs for hotels and also for commercial forests. In other words, forests used for things like wood or framing for houses and baseball bats and things like that. Now, REIT will not grow your wealth like owning actual housing assets. You know, owning a small house and then owning a threeplex or a fourplex and slowly yet surely owning an apartment building and starting up your own REIT. But if you're not willing to go through all the hard work that is involved in owning and operating real estate, then it might be the thing for you. Unfortunately, a lot of people underestimate how much work owning and operating real estate is. You have to maintain and update property, screen prospective tenants, respond to tenants with legitimate and sometimes illegitimate requests upon you. Definitely not a pathway for the faint of heart or those looking for passive income. But that is why there are REITs. Just put your money in, let someone else do all that hard work for you. Now again, you're not gonna grow exponentially doing this, but you will grow steadily. And that might be just what the investment advisor ordered. Honorable mentions in this list of tools would include exotic investment instruments, things like derivatives, Forex, that's foreign exchange currency, cryptocurrencies, franchising restaurants and things of that nature, and angel investing. I would be dishonorable if I didn't mention that we have a video coming out on exotic investment instruments and plain old vanilla investing instruments in the near future. So be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you are alerted by the YouTube algorithm when those videos drop. Be sure to like this video if you like this video. And also drop us a comment down below on which investment tool you utilize the most. Inquiring minds need to know. I'm about to get out of here, folks. Great catching up with all of you. And I'll talk to you next time. Peace.